Oh, hello everybody. It's me, Chris Smith, and welcome to It's Chris Smith Time. Did you all hear the news yesterday? They did a, an announcement that Back to the Future, the musical, is coming to Broadway in 2023. Now, you know, it's been playing in London on the West End, and I have listened to the cast recording. Oh, for the love of it, it's so noisy around here. I've listened to the cast recording, and I liked it okay. I saw a thing in the New York Post saying that they that the music was not good. Of course, they did like um, uh, The Power of Love, and is it that, uh, what's that other one that they use, the Johnny Be Good? Yes, Johnny Be Good. So those are in the musical. Um, but they said that Ollie Dobson most likely would not be coming uh, with the show to, um, to Broadway as he played in London, but that Roger Bart, who you'll remember from the producers and um, so many things, Young Frankenstein, that he would be coming and playing Doc Brown. So, um, are you all excited about it? I think it could be fun, and they have a flying DeLorean. What could be better? Now, there was other big news yesterday. They said that in July, starting July 1st, on Broadway, and just for the month of July, they are lifting the mask mandate. So, if they're still strongly recommending that you wear your mask when you come to the theater, but if you don't, for the month of July, you don't have to. Now, isn't that strange? Um, because all the theaters have been requiring it. And why just in the month of July? Is it because it's hot? And they said that in mid-July they'll make an announcement about what will happen further after that. I guess they're waiting to see if there's like another surge, another surprise, much like the Omicron um, out, you know, a surge that we had in December and beyond. Um, but I would love to not have to wear the mask anymore. You know I have been wearing these masks forever, over two years now, and I am exhausted. But we'll do whatever is best for us to be safe. In other news, company announced this week that it is closing at the end of July on Broadway, which stunned everybody, especially considering that they won five Tony Awards at the recent Tony Awards, and um, including Best Revival of a Musical and Best um, Featured Actress for Patti LuPone, you know, and Best Featured Actor for Matt Doyle. I mean, it's a shock. Now, recently, my friend Abigail visited, and she brought me a company playbill, which I was thrilled with. You know, my friends saw it in April when they went to New York, and they saw it at the Bernard B. Jacobs Theater. And I was delighted to at least get a program. I already had the poster. And, uh, of course, the inside, and Abigail also brought me a magnet. I'll show you the magnets later when I'm at home. Look, here's the cast of company. I love real playbills that are actually from New York because even though we have playbills here in LA, it's just not the same. It's not done the same way as the New York ones. Like they actually have articles, as you would find if you subscribe to, to um, Playbill magazine. Oh, look, here's an ad for Mrs. Doubtfire. Oh, I love Mrs. Doubtfire. Yeah, so everybody is just stunned that company is closing because it was doing so well. 
But as it turns out, in recent weeks, their numbers have been falling and they've been filling their houses like 77%. My friend Jameson, who used to work with me, oh, it's so noisy around here. Um, he recently went to see Company the week after the Tony Awards, or that, you know, that week, the days after, and Patti Lapone was out that afternoon, and he was very sad about it. And you know, Patti doesn't miss very often, but um, people were speculating, they were saying, oh, um, maybe Renee Elise Goldsberry should go into the role that, that of Bobby. It's currently played by Katrina Lee, and people had so many good ideas about who could be coming in as replacements, and now the show is just going to close. So there's six more weeks, maybe five now that we've, I think six still, because um, it was just announced this week. But I'm just so sad because I really wanted to go to New York and see it, but there is going to be a touring production and uh, that will start in the 2023-2024 season. Because you know, it's now that we're into the 2022-2023 season, so theaters are already booked, they've already announced their whole, their whole runs for the season, so it would, there's no time to get a show into it now. So, yeah, devastating news, but things close they do now speaking of shows that are having troubles funny girl the show that was only nominated for one tony um for jared grimes it ha is losing its leading lady beanie feldstein in um, september and also jane lynch is leaving as well and they're saying that these were planned exits all along. But many people are speculating as to who will replace Beanie Feldstein, and some are saying it could be Leah Michelle herself, who, if you watched Glee, you know that the character of Rachel was, um, was obsessed with um, being in Funny Girl and eventually did get to Broadway and was in Funny Girl as Fanny Bryce. Um, and then for a while, Ryan Murphy had, was going to produce Funny Girl on Broadway, and Leah Michelle was going to go into it, so it was going to be like art imitating life. Um, that was, what, around 2007, something like that? Well, then there was going to be one with Lauren Ambrose. Yes, so Lauren Ambrose did My Fair, My Fair Lady on Broadway, but she was supposed to do Funny Girl, and then that, that production never happened. Um, so, what do you all think? Do you think it could be Leah Michelle at long last getting to play Fanny Bryce? And then recently she was on the Tony Awards um, singing for the 15th anniversary of Spring Awakening. They did that documentary special about the Spring Awakening anniversary. And so it's sort of like Leah Michelle is out there in the world, so maybe she she is ripe to be put into the show. It would be wonderful. Now, speaking of wonderful, Mrs. Doubtfire, which I have been absolutely obsessed with this year, um, the cast recording was finally released this week, so you can you can download Mrs. Doubtfire, and I just love it. I think the music is so happy and so peppy. It's just what we need now in the world, don't you think, viewers? And that one's going to also be touring in the 2023-2024 season, if the can last that long, but I think it will. Um, now, I've been going to a lot of shows at the Hollywood Fringe Festival. I'll tell you all about all of them one day. Um, it's been going on here in beautiful Hollywood, California from June 9th to the 26th, so there's only a few more days last, last, uh, left for it. If you're in the Hollywood area, go to Hollywood Fringe dot org and um, see their schedule and try and see some shows 
But my favorite so far this year has been Housewife 52. It's sort of a musical, sort of a dance show. It's a new physical musical they advertise it as. Created by John Wooty Wooty. I don't know how to say his last name, but there it is right there. I do apologize. I've never heard it said out loud. I've just heard him called John. Um, it's from Kick Kick Boom Theater. And here's the cast. And it's set in 1952. And it's about couples that live on a cul-de-sac. Uh, there's a widow, and then there's three um, couples. And it is amazing. The music is excellent, and the dance is incredible. I think if you all get a chance to see that, you will, you will just be thrilled out of your heads. Um, and so it's at Hollywood Fringe um, in Hollywood, California. So, yes, um, that's all that we have to talk about today. Um, if you are in the New York area, then get thee to company if you haven't had a chance to see it yet. Okay, goodbye everybody, goodbye.